Welcome to day 14 of my 30 day security challenge. It's the month long challenge I created to help you gain control of your security and privacy online. You can follow along with the security challenge via my blog at snubsy.com where you can skip ahead and download a checklist of the entire challenge. Each video will also be curated into a playlist so it'll be really easy to follow along from day one all the way through 30 here on YouTube. So today we are going to go through all of our online accounts and generate new passwords for them. Yay! Get out that notepad that you were using to write down important details. Today we are going to transfer those fresh new passwords into a password manager and generate new ones for your online accounts. Now let's start with the number one rule of password management. Each one must be different. The reason being, you don't know how a company is storing your password whenever you create an account on their website. They could have terrible security practices and if they got hacked and your password got leaked, you would not want an attacker trying that same password against your other accounts online. They could easily gain access to more accounts than just the one that got hacked, so using a different password on each account makes it a lot harder for someone to take control of your online self. So how do you create a new password for each site? That is a lot of work and you'd probably run out of clever ideas for passwords pretty quickly. That's why I recommend a password manager. If you missed that episode, go back to yesterday where I discussed the pros and cons of password managers. The one I use called LastPass can generate new passwords for my accounts automatically, or I can manually generate randomly created passwords that include symbols, numbers, and letters all mixed up together. And they can be really, really long, which is the best part. Now, I would never remember those obviously, but now I don't need to. Now, if you don't have a way to randomly generate tough passwords, I'll give you some pointers. The National Institute of Standards and Technology Special Publication 863 recommends users create passwords that include long phrases with four words or more. This is because longer passwords can be much harder to crack by software than shorter passwords that still include letters, numbers, and symbols. I tend to do a little bit of both. If my password was the phrase, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live. Any Harry Potter fans out there? Yeah, me too. Those books were so good. I could then add in some weird uppercases and numbers and symbols to make it even harder. So for example, that would change to, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live in late speak. So now you know why I like those password managers so much. That is a real pain in the bum to keep on typing in all the time. And PS, no, that is not one of my passwords. So good luck trying it. You don't need to add in the weird letters and numbers and symbols and stuff like that. That's just my own thing. Simply having a long phrase is enough, though I really prefer not using dictionary words in my passphrases. NIST also recommends not changing your password periodically because this leads to counterproductive password generation. In other words, people get lazy. I tend to change my passwords about once a year by just generating new ones through LastPass's generation tool. Now, how do you know which sites you currently own online? Which sites you have an account on? This is where your notepad comes in. You should have written down all of the websites that you log into. If you haven't already begun to add those to your password manager, go ahead and manually go to each site and change your password through the settings of your account. Generally, you will find online sites have an account or a profile page that has security options, including a change password page. You will need to type in your old password, then your new one, and sometimes twice. If you use LastPass like I do, it should recognize your login attempt and ask you if you want to remember that new login for future use. I always click yes so that it just autofills it for me. One really great way to find sites that you have created accounts for is by searching your email inbox. Generally new sites will send you a confirmation email or sign you up for a newsletter or you'll get a coupon mailer etc etc. So if you search your inbox for the word unsubscribe or the phrase confirm your email or something like that you can generally find all of these sites. You can also search noam.com for your username and it'll show you if you've created an account on popular sites using that username. Now remember, you can always go back through these accounts and delete any that you no longer need by using justdelete.me, and you should probably update all of your passwords to new, fresh passwords just in case any of these have ever been breached before in the past. While it does take a long time to manually go through all of these online accounts to update the passwords on them, it also saves you tons of time in the future because you will be less susceptible to hacks. Now day 14 is now complete. Tomorrow is all about setting up that two-factor authentication 
notification goodness. But first, make sure to subscribe to YouTube and hit up snubsy.com for the downloadable checklist, and you can totally skip ahead on the 30-day challenge if you want to. Again, I am Shannon Morris, and I will see you tomorrow for day 15.